From picking parts to putting them together, building a PC is too damn hard even in 2016. That is what a website recently said in one of their articles. And I take issue with this. So we really, really don't make it a point to talk about what other publications post. But this article was sort of attacking the idea of building PCs, and that's what we focus on. So when you attack that idea as vehemently as they did, I want to make it a point to counter and defend the PC building culture as it should be. So here's the thing. This article from said website, uh, just lifting that up, no particular reason. The article points out that uh, building a PC is, quote, too expensive, far too expensive, they say. Uh, they say that the SIs would cost too much more if you wanted to go to someone like CyberPower to have them build your gaming PC instead. And then they go on to recommend Apple, and I don't need to point out the irony there. Further, the article says, uh, beginning to end, the process of building a computer took me almost five hours, and I had to make emergency calls to another editor in the process. And he says, once I couldn't figure out why the fans were, weren't spinning, probably weren't plugged in. And again, when the computer didn't recognize the Ethernet cable, probably no drivers. And then also said, and this is my favorite part, I was literally bleeding from a cut on my hand by the end of it, which YouTube guides said was common. Quote, I bled for this f***ing thing. Those were the words published on the website. So uh, that stated, you know, aside from potentially bleeding out in the process of building a computer, I'm going to show you how easy it is to build a system. We have a full guide on this. It's only 23 minutes long, which for the full process is not bad. You can go there if you want really the specifics and you're actually a first-time builder. Here, we're going to speed build a system. I'll show you how quick it is to put something together. We're going to pick parts off of our own rack and just pretend it's a Micro Center or fries or whatever and put it together quickly, put it together properly, and, uh, and sort of dispel some of this insanity that was published. People who build their own PCs aren't like garage woodworkers building their own birdhouses. They're not making anything in the same way someone might restore an old hot rod. They're just taking different parts from different companies and plugging them together. So I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what those three different analogies mean, but uh, if you're restoring a hot rod, you're probably not actually creating an engine in your garage. Birdhouses is totally nonlinear, but let's, let's do this thing. Let's pick out some parts and put together a budget system because this dude was like, I picked a GTX 1070 and an i7 and building computers is way too expensive. And he also already had a monitor, and it probably is a 1080p monitor, but we'll, we'll worry about all that in the somewhat of a warehouse room. <laughs> all right, let's go over there. Okay, so my objective is pretty simple. I want to be able to play games with fairly high settings, high to ultra, at 1080p or 1440p, and we have the hardware for that. So uh, first off, let's start with a CPU choice. I've got a ton of CPUs down here, as you'll see in B-roll. And we're just going to go with an i3-6300 for the CPU. Don't need anything too crazy. So we've got an i3. That is, I believe, a 150-ish dollar part. I'm going to take the radiator off of this. Uh, so we've got this B150A. We'll take the liquid cooler off, put something on that's more affordable slightly. But I'm still going to put a liquid cooler on there. It'll just be a cheaper 120 millimeter. And the reason I'm putting a liquid cooler on there, uh, I would recommend going with either a stock cooler or an air cooler for this build but the article specifically calls out liquid coolers as being very difficult to work with. So I'm going to put one of those on there and show you that it's not. Need a video card. Let's grab this uh, RX 480 that we've been working with for far too long now. So it's a four, that's a $240 for the eight gigabyte 480. So I'll grab one of those. This is a Corsair CX 500. That's a pretty cheap part, 500 Watts, not modular. I think it's $50 before rebate, after rebates and promos, it's like 30 or 20 or something. We need RAM. What is this, Fury? This is Fury. Let's grab two sticks of this, even though it's a four stick kit. Uh, this is like 2400 megahertz or something. So we've got eight or 16 gigabytes, but that's another 50 bucks for eight gigabytes of that. This is a one terabyte WD Blue. These are 50 bucks. So we'll grab a WD Blue for 50 bucks case. I'm going to use either uh, an NZXT S340 or a Corsair 400C, depending on which one doesn't require me going into the attic to get. And that'll be either $75 or $100. So our whole PC build, yes, the prices are a little bit kind. They're 
they're okay, but uh, you could certainly do better uh, if you had new egg accessible to you, but we're not doing that. We're going from what we have. So we're in the 600 to $700 range for the build. It is not exorbitantly expensive, quite obviously. Uh, let's put this thing together and see if it takes five hours to do. So we're gonna try and turn this into a bit of a learning opportunity rather than just beating up uh, the author over the article. First of all, building a system, I'm gonna speed build this thing and I need to be attached actually to my anti-static wire. So let's just go ahead and do that. We've explained all this in the how to build a PC video, but uh, installing a CPU cooler, specifically a radiator, the author sort of states that installing a CPU cooler uh, that uses liquid is a huge pain and that's really the opposite of what I've found to be true. So when you're installing one of these things, it's best to do it outside of the case and get it all situated first. And then uh, once it's done, we can drop this whole board pre-assembled into the case and simply uh, attach the radiator to one of the fan slots. Let's get this thing attached. I'm hoping for a few minutes here. All right, so the CPU is socketed. Or well, yeah, CPU socketed, cooler is ready to go. I think, I think that'll give us the best mobility, having the tubes in that corner. Okay, this is simple as well. I'm gonna do opposing corners. The thermal paste is already applied to the base, the cold plate of this cooler. Having the tubes in that corner really isn't where I want them, but this is an Asetek cheap 120 millimeter liquid cooler. It's not branded or anything. The tubes are very short. I don't, if you buy a sort of branded, real finalized liquid cooler, they will be much longer tubes and give you better flexibility. Uh, so you can mount, you can position them wherever you want relative to the CPU. But this is a good cheap liquid cooler just to prove a point that they are not in fact a monster to install. You don't want to over tighten these. So I'm just going to once over. These are all exactly where they should be. So that is done. Let's get this RAM socketed. This goes into slot two and four if we only have two sticks, which we do. So this is a simple. Push the pins aside, drop the stick in, use thumbs, pop it, and we're good. So this is done. Now it's time to, uh, let's get the power supply in the case next. All right, so we're good to go there. That goes into the case. There's only one way it can go in. I'm just gonna stuff all these cables in. Not really stuff that you need to see on camera, but we'll show it all at the end anyway. Okay, so that slides into the S340. Okay, good, good enough. Okay, so uh, the original complaint was that it's very difficult to mount a radiator because he was trying to screw in everything all at once. Here's my trick. I put the case on the side. This is about eight of these screws. Don't get lazy with these. Just screw them all in. And you'll notice I've got the radiator just hanging over the side of the case. This is the way I recommend doing it. Uh, we're gonna install it as rear mounted. The author kind of said it takes a day of research just to make sure everything's compatible. Maybe your very first time if you're trying to do it alone, but that uh, really isn't an issue. So uh, I would recommend either our forums, our comments sections, Reddit's build a PC section will take care of you if you have questions. So between all those different resources, there's plenty of things available where people can personally help you compatibility check stuff. So here's the, the quote that made me choose a radiator a liquid cooler, even though I'd normally do air. The quote was, uh, but getting there was a nightmare. It is by far the most difficult project I've ever bought and put together. Obviously has never bought anything from Ikea. Really, there is no good way to do this. Pretty good way to do it. Uh, but the one part that stood out to me was, uh, when I'm pushing a water cooler down on the CPU while twisting its radiator into place and screwing it into place at the same time, big pronoun reference, it becomes clear that PCs don't just work, quoting, I suppose, Apple's marketing campaign. So we've mounted this first. That goes first. That reduces the workload substantially. Once that's there, take the radiator tubes down. You want them oriented down. 
the pump will work better with gravity, gravity that way. <laughs> I do tubes down, that will work the best with the uh, cooler that we have and really most of them on the market. And that's just because of gravity, pretty basic stuff. And the radiator, no twisting and turning involved. Okay, there's one, two, but, and that is the last screw. All that's left is installing the hard drive, connecting the cables. For the most part, this is about as straightforward as it gets. GPU installation, very simple. There we go. GPU is installed. Not the hardest thing I've ever done, I'll say that much. Okay, so cables, that's all that's left. I need one of those. Is there a cutout in the power supply shroud? Yes, there is. One of these. Let's use this one. Uh, we're gonna need a SATA cable, that'll stay behind this thing. Then we need a CPU header. 24 pin, it goes in the 24 pin slot. That's right there. Ignore the flexing of the motherboard. I know someone will comment on it, and I don't care. I'm gonna plug in the PCIe cable into the RX 480. Hide the rest of it down back in the hole where it came from. And uh, now we've got to connect the eight pin, which really I should have done before the radiator, honestly. Uh, so I can see it actually. Done. Ow. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. Now I can be exactly like the guy from the article. Look guys, I got a cut just from building a computer. Ah. So now we, uh, we have properly followed the motherboard guide and I've cut myself by jamming my fingernail over a, uh, over a pen. But that's it, that's the computer we built. So uh, at this point, all you have to do, uh, as you all know, all you have to do is connect the uh, hard drive via SATA cable. Hard drive goes in the bottom of this box right here and we install Windows, 100 bucks or a little less maybe, and call it a day. So, uh, how's that for, for system building? That was, what was that, maybe, I don't know, not too long, less than 20 minutes. Certainly not five hours. Uh, I'll make a quick note about standards. There was a cry for standards in the article saying that PCs are too hard to assemble because there's no standardization. Everything's just a wild west of components type of thing. Here's the thing. Uh, Molex cable, standardized, PCIe slots, standardized. If you really want to kind of make bigger points, this is an ATX form factor motherboard. That is a fixed standard. It has a fixed size and spec that it must fit within to be called an ATX motherboard. The power supply, ATX form factor power supply. The case, ATX form factor supporting case. DDR4 memory, 288 pins. I don't know how much more standardized you could get because uh, that's it's all standards. 80 plus, that's another one. Power, it's, well, that's, that's a certification, let's be fair. But it's kind of in the same tune where it's all, it's got good definitions in the industry. You can research it all. Uh, so here's the thing. This article was a little silly. It was blown way out of proportion how hard it is to build computers. I felt personally uh, inspired to just show how we could speed build a system. Yes, I do, I, I have done this, I know what I'm doing. Even a first time builder though, you could watch this video for the most part and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense, I'll just do that. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. He says, accessibility isn't a priority for most enthusiast re users, so there's no reason to make the experience of getting into PC games easier. Yeah, this is pretty easy, but if you wanted to make it easier, you could buy a pre-built system from any number of SIs, and they don't cost 300 to $500 more to build, as, as the article said. We've talked about this. A lot of them are $100 $200, which, sure, you could pick out better components yourself, but it's not unreasonable. Uh, and then to turn around and recommend Apple just really obviously shows that there's no foundation here for an article. So there's a speed build. Check out the Patreon link, the post video to help us out directly. More content on the channel as always. 
thanks for watching, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully we, we debunked that hysteria and I'll see you all next time. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be this way. Is that a spider? That's weird.